Now let's have a look at the year-end close roll forward. The first steps to performing a year-end close roll forward when the parent file is stored on a local SmartSync server or in the case where cloud is to create a synchronized copy. Of course, to do that, we would typically go to File, SmartSync Server, and open our synchronized copy. But it just so happens to have a synchronized copy from Caseware Cloud instance right here. So I'll use the file that we just locked down. And it's worth noting that the file doesn't have to be locked down to perform a year-end close roll forward. Also, we're not changing the current file. So in this situation, it doesn't matter if there are any other synchronized copies in either an offline or online state. I'm able to perform the year-end close regardless. And from the document manager, we can see that I've selected most of the documents to roll forward in my document manager. I have the roll forward column here, and document U.3 is not flagged to roll forward, so this will be removed from the file on a year-end close. Also, several documents, including 8.2, 8.2.1, 8.3, and D.2, have been flagged to roll forward only as placeholders for next year. So the content won't be moved forward, but the line item in the document manager will be available to populate with new content in next year's file. The year-end close is found on the engagement ribbon, year-end close. Note the file path is a local file path. The year and close and roll forward creates a local file in a non-sync state. And we have to provide the file name still. And if we want, we can change the file and folder location when we're doing the year and close and roll forward. Some of the options that are available to us include the compression of the prior year file. So if I proceed with the year and close and roll forward, the file that I'm currently in will be saved compressed if I check the checkbox. This is going to update my prior year balance data shifting all the columns over one in the working trial balance. I've also got this selected to update my opening balance data with whatever my consolidated balances are. And I could choose from any of the other balance types that are listed here. Because I'm closing out the income statement information, I need to specify which retained earnings account number I want to close that out to. Now, in the event that there were uh, partnerships, or multiple accounts to close to, we do have a multiple option that allows us to select the net income and close it out to other balance sheet accounts. Here we can select the percentage, the minimum and maximum amount to close out to each account that we list. We also have the ability to add other distributions, allowing us to close out any balance sheet account to any other balance sheet account. So for example, in a partnership, you might have contributions and drawings accounts for a particular partner you can set that up to automatically close to their capital account on the year-end close. I'm going to keep this simple, close the multiple account distribution, and just close my, to my retained earnings account 296, which in my trial balance is my retained earnings beginning. Underneath that, if there are any forecasts in the file, we can roll those forward, keeping them with the appropriate year's data. And we can update our current year budget with the forecast from last year. We're also able to update case view roll forward cells, which is a specific property in a case view cell to grab information that is not linked via a calculation. Roll forward budgets as well. Obviously, if I'm roll forwarding forecasts and I have budgets, I might want to roll forward the budgets as well. And any custom balances that you've created under tools, options, lists, custom balances can also be rolled forward. Information to include in next year's file includes spreadsheet analysis data, foreign exchange information, program assertion information, program checklist completion information, commentary text. All of these are referring to automatic documents. So if you're using our audit template, whether it's the CPAM, the International Auditing Standards Template, or the new Audit US template, this does not affect the case view programs and checklists. I like to roll forward commentary text. It's easier to have that roll forward rather than having to retype it. I can delete it if necessary. Outstanding transactions can be brought forward if you have outstanding transactions. However, if you're doing reviews and audits, it's less likely that you'll have transactions in your file. 
I like to bring forward document references and notes. They tend to be fairly consistent from year to year, but again, it's easier to delete a note than retype it. You'll notice I leave tick marks blank because the tick mark tends to indicate that I've done some work in the file and I don't want to indicate I've done work in a brand new file at this point in time. I'm going to go ahead and bring the case view references and notes along with me as well. Once I've got it all selected, I still need the file name here. And I'm going to look to last year's file name to determine what this year's file name should be. So I've got 160519, which happens to be today's date, year, month, day, and the file name. So what I'm going to do is just increment the year and use the same name. So I've had that off to the side on my clipboard to make it easier to uh, complete for us so we don't have to wait for that. Now the only thing left to do at this point is click OK. Now, the year-end close in Roll4 may take a few moments as it creates a new file. If we look in the bottom on the status bar, we can see that the 170519 has already been created. It's now just going through all the documents to process all the case view cells. It's going to update my year-end from 2013 to 2014 and checking the integrity. Once it's finished, it leaves me in the new year file, which is in a non-sync local copy state. I can tell it's in a non-sync state simply by looking in the bottom right-hand corner of this file. If I open that menu, everything is grayed out except work offline, which would put it into a sync state, but it would create a sync copy from my local copy. So before I do that, what I want to do is make this file available to the rest of my team. And that's the next step. I do this by publishing it to either my local SmartSync server or Caseware Cloud. Now before I publish it up, I want to point out in the Caseware Cloud environment, this file is associated with the prior year's cloud entity but not yet published Caseware Cloud. And we can verify that by going to Engagement and Engagement Properties. Here we can see my cloud entity is Caseware Zone with the client number of my Caseware Zone entity in the cloud and the information associated with the file is there pulling from Caseware Zone as well. So it's still associated and as a matter of fact if I go back to my cloud and do a little refresh here we'll see that the file is in fact associated. Notice it's not in a sync state and, and it's kind of grayed out. That's because the file doesn't yet exist in my cloud but because of the association, we're able to grab certain data points and bring them through for dashboarding purposes in the Caseware Cloud. So let's get back to my file here. And I still need to publish this file to the cloud so the rest of the team can work on it with me. Publish is found in the SmartSync ribbon. So I select SmartSync and Publish. Now the first thing we see, because I'm connected to my cloud, is it comes up with my cloud server and my entity. If this was going to the SmartSync server, it would simply post it up to your SmartSync server local sync installation. I'm going to click OK here, and the file goes through the publishing process, which includes a repair file. And once the repair file is completed, it goes through saving a compressed copy. The compressed copy is then published, if we look in the bottom right hand corner, we're publishing that compressed copy up to the cloud, then syncing any changes made during the publishing process, and well, I haven't done any of those, and in the end, leaving the user in an online synchronized copy of the published parent file, which we can see, again, in the bottom right hand corner where it states that we're in an online state. At this point, if the user is ready to start working, they can continue in their local synchronized copy. Otherwise, they may want to delete the local synchronized copy until they're ready to start working on the file. Once again, delete is found on the SmartSync ribbon, delete copy. I'm not going to delete this copy right now. Instead, what I'm going to do is go back to Gary's file, and under SmartSync server, he's going to be able to refresh his SmartSync server and see the new 17 file. Also notice the 16 file has a padlock on it, letting Gary know that that file is in a locked down state. For Gary to open up this new file that I've just published, he simply has to double click on it. 
Now it's going to take a moment after the double click to verify that he doesn't already have a copy on his computer before it starts downloading a copy for him. And once it's finished downloading, it's going to expand the files and put Gary into the document manager. And you can see that Todd is in his copy. And if we go back to mine, I can also see that Gary is in an online session in his own SmartSync copy. So now we're able to share the New Year file that's been published to the cloud and continue working as we would have otherwise. Also note that the documents that I had set to roll forward as placeholders are now placeholders awaiting new content for the current year. And document U3, which was not marked for roll forward, has been removed from the current year file. And that is how to perform a year-end close when the parent file is stored on a SmartSync server or in Caseware Cloud.